Welcome to Motion Story Recaps. Today I will show you a psychological thriller drama. Titled Inside 2023. Nemo, an art thief, enters a deserted high-tech luxurious penthouse in Times Square, New York, to steal some works of art, including an expensive self-portrait. The business owner is on vacation with his daughter. Nemo can't find the portrait, so his pal on the radio tells him to go with whatever he can find. He has seven minutes before the alarm sounds because the security system was disregarded at entry. Once finished, he must enter the activation code at the main entrance to unlock it and leave. Unfortunately, the system breaks down because the code entered was incorrect. Alarms start to sound. The balcony door he entered through automatically closes and locks. It's also locked at the front door. Penthouse is locked up his radio companion informs Nemo that he is on his own and disconnects. Nemo must reach up to the speakers and cut their wires in order to silence them due to the loud alerts. Except for the lights and the air conditioning, which rises and falls in response to high temperatures, all connections are gone. The water supply was also cut off by the mishap. Nemo is imprisoned, inside. As a result, a person must contend with thick walls and glass windows, a metal door reinforced with wood, an unmanaged centralized cooling and heating system as a backup no telephone connection, and worst of all, no running water. Instead, they are meant to trap anyone who has accessed the penthouse without authorization. However, if the system breaks down on its own, after receiving a phone call alerting the authorities, it will appear to take a long time for them to enter the penthouse and free the trapped person. Because he lacks a phone, his mental health is unstable. We now get at our next subject. Food is getting scarce. The taps don't have any drinkable water. The central air conditioning is out of his control. He is unable to even access the balcony. The only things in his room are a tiny pool, an aquarium with two unusual fish, and the portraits he's been painting since he was a youngster. He attempts to chisel through the main door's wood but discovers that it is actually composed of metal inside. The windows are made of strong, unbreakable glass. He spends his days eating dog food, biscuits, raw fish from the aquarium, and other leftovers while pondering how to get out. When the refrigerator runs out of ice, he collects water from the sprinklers in the tiny indoor garden. He drinks ice from the refrigerator. He must also contend with the air conditioning, whose temperature changes. It rises to 42 degrees before beginning to drop by 2 degrees. Within the first 20 minutes of the movie, he does realize that there might be a shaft in the ceiling above the large sconce. The rest of the movie demonstrates how he manages to stay alive while attempting to reach the ceiling in order to remove the sconce using his own ingenious means, despite having little to no food and water. However, this will take some time, and he is starting to feel the effects of realizing that he is stranded. A picture of his face while he continues to stare at the air conditioner, which eventually starts to blow cool air again instead of heated, gives the impression that he is gazing up at the sky or, to put it another way, at God. It is absurd to consider how technology has replaced God as the source of all our needs. The several CCTV cameras that have been installed throughout the entire building are shown on the television. He has identified the individuals he can see, such as the male receptionist and the female housekeeper. He has dreams about them and even the proprietor, who, oddly, invites him to stay. The speaker then goes on to discuss free choice, fate, gods, actions, people as puppets and how all of these things are somehow connected to Nemo in his current situation he is obviously a puppet in the hands of technology, which in this case is fate or God. His free will is useless and he has only taken a few actions. When he views a portrait, he notices a figure that's somewhat like him and stands for Satan or the devil. Being an art enthusiast, he gathers various items from the penthouse, including showpieces and the sconces bolts that he has somehow managed to remove, among other things to construct his own original works of art. He accomplished the latter by arranging furniture such that his hands were at the sconce. But it wasn't a simple task. After slipping and losing his footing, he broke his leg. He had to craft numerous wrenches from pieces of furniture he had broken. To keep his shattered leg straight, he fastened a piece of wood to it. The furniture is stacked takes several days, as evidenced by how much faces has accumulated in the toilet and bathtub. Since there is no water, there has also been no flushing. 
What we can infer from all of this is that his brain is making an uncommon effort to deal with the situation. He befriends the individuals he sees on the television as well as a pigeon perched on the balcony, whom he asks to go for assistance. He also paints and sketches on walls, and he has nightmares in which he converses with the owner of the penthouse and the portraits. Thus, the boundary between reality and fantasy starts to blur. Nemo, though, remains steadfast in his intentions. That he can express himself screaming, singing, and yelling. Basically, reacting to the suffering he is experiencing and the sense of helplessness he feels, is what may protect him from losing his mind. Nemo succeeds in removing every bolt from the ceiling-mounted sconce so that he can exit through the shaft. His two creations, the smaller, comprised of various showpieces, and the larger, the stack of furniture he used to get to the sconce, are left behind. If we take into account the pile of faces he left in the bathroom, there is also a third piece of art. He also drew sketches, which are now on the walls. Additionally, he leaves a note describing how it is necessary to demolish his penthouse. He concludes by asserting that creation is impossible without destruction. In light of the works of art he produced by smashing the furnishings and flipping the entire house upside down, this is accurate. The escape route was rightfully his best invention. Remember, the Shawshank Redemption? His biggest invention, by far, was the escape path that he has saved three works of art before climbing the scaffold, removing the skylight, and disappearing from view. Make sure that you've subscribed and turn on the notification for more updates. Thank you for watching.